Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Amen. Bless God. What we're going to do is God blesses. At the beginning of this message, you just received something that's going to be a part of an experiential that we're going to do, an experience here in this household of faith. And so we're going to conclude with our third gift today, according to God's will. So I want us to look. We're going to talk about three gifts for the king. Say three gifts for the king. And so on this slide, you see gold, frankincense, and myrrh, okay? So these are the three gifts that the three wise men were able to give to our, the infant king, Jesus Christ, according to God's will. So we want to go to the next slide quickly. I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to look at Matthew 2 and verse 9 through 11. In verse 9, it says, After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. They went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. You may be seated. So over the last couple of weeks, we've just been talking about what have the wise men been doing. They've been traveling from a far distance in order to be able to see who? Jesus. And they see the star, it guides them to Bethlehem, goes ahead of them, stops over the place where Jesus was at. And then what happens to them? They get transformed, they get changed, they receive something they didn't have before. And when they see the star, they are filled with what? Joy. So joy should be a part of every, I love God for this, thank you Father for that. Joy should be a part of every believer's experience. You should experience joy. And sometimes what happens is, is we deny ourselves joy because we let our circumstances dictate our emotions or our feelings. And so as a result, we don't sometimes have joy. I was just standing outside with Walt before I came in and was looking at prayer requests, and one of the prayer requests was not a good prayer request, so I tore it up and threw it away. It was counter to God. I said, I'll pray for the person, but I ain't going to pray for what they put in the box. See, the enemy, when you, this is how you know something. You know you're on the right path when the enemy get busy. But sometimes what we do is we don't take joy in the trial. You know why? But the thing is, and I love God for this. This is just something he had me in his face earlier today. He said, I'm telling you that there's something great on the other side because I'm allowing the enemy to try to steal your focus to keep you from getting to what it is that you're trying to get to. See, he knows that it's something that you're doing that I desire. And if you really have your faith rooted in me, if it's steadfast in me, if it's unshakable in me, that when you see him, you ain't going to get shook. If anything, you're going to get like height. Dude, really? So it's about to go down? You know why I know it's about to go down? Because now the enemy done tried to get involved. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, see, that shifts your mentality. Now I could take joy in a trial. Now I could take joy in a tribulation. Now I could take joy in a circumstance that at first I might have been like, I don't know how it's going to work out. But earlier today when I was teaching, it says in God's word that Jesus is always victorious. He's never lost. So as a result, whatever the enemy is trying to do to me or to you, it's not going to win. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Woo! And when some folk want to put their mouth on you, Jesus says, I will condemn that. That's what we as the servants of God get. He said, that's what I do for my folks. So let's run here because that, that was just a whole, that's a whole nother message. So in 11, they entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest, right? They open up the chest and they say, Jesus, this is what I have for you. Jesus, I brought this from a long distance. Jesus, as a wise person, I believe it's wise for me to give you these things. So the first thing they give is gold. The second thing they give is what? Frankincense. The third thing they give is what? Myrrh. And so we're going to get to a space. Let's run over here. I just want to get us to a space because I just think the, God is just wanting us to be in a space where he wants to bless as only he can bless. I want to talk about myrrh. We talked about gold, which we know is a representation of faith. We talked about um, frankincense, which is a representation of love. But today we're going to talk about myrrh, okay? We're going to talk about myrrh. And watch this. If you mess around, if you smell your hands because you rubbed your hands together, right? If you smell your hands, what you have in your hands is frankincense and myrrh. Mm. See, that's, that's sweet smelling. 
See, that's the experiential. See, because you need to know what frankincense and myrrh smell like. Ooh, this is going to get deep on the end. See, when you know what frankincense and myrrh smell like, then what will happen is, is you'll know how all of us as God's children are supposed to smell. Right? We're supposed to smell right. Ooh, and be right, and live right, and talk right, and praise right, and worship. Ooh, I told you. It's a good one. We just at the beginning. So watch this. So myrrh is this third gift that they give to Jesus. It's a sweet-smelling tree product. So it comes from trees. So sweet-smelling, sticking brown substance that comes from trees and used in products that give the air or people's bodies a pleasing smell. Now, real talk, this is something that now solidifies the message in a much deeper way because now you've brought what? Your sense of smell into this message. Do you understand that there's sometimes when you hear the word of God that your ears receive it, that your eyes can see it, but your nose don't always get involved. And this particular message now, you're going to walk out of here with what? A kind of smell that's going to be unique. You can actually buy this particular frankincense and myrrh in a bottle from Lifeway store. And I would tell you, invest in it. You know why? Because when we get done and you find out when you mess around and you put frankincense and myrrh together and what they represent, ooh, ooh, you'll change the kingdom. You'll start putting frankincense and myrrh on some stuff that was giving you problems. You'll put some frankincense and myrrh on a desk where an individual is trying to come at you. What? You'll put it on your car. You'll start putting frankincense and myrrh on some stuff and just say, God, because it's sweet smelling to you, I know you're going to change the atmosphere. you put it on your hands and then shake the hand of the person that's coming against you. What? Mess around. You won't let me anoint you, but I'll mess around and touch you with this anointing. What? We're going to get to a space. Let's run to a space. We're just in a place today. So let's, let's, let's go back one. Proverbs 11.30, I want you to stand to your feet one more time. We only got one verse that we're dealing with today as God is blessing. And Proverbs 11.30, to amplify, it says, The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life. And he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. You may be seated. What do we just talk about with myrrh? Myrrh is a tree product. Right? It comes forth from a tree. It's something that a tree produces. When it is combined with frankincense, it's an aromatic smell that pleases God. What God is saying here in this verse in Proverbs written by Solomon, we got to look at this. It says, the fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous. What uncompromising means is that it is what it is and it ain't changing. Uncompromising means, oh, I love God for this. We can't talk about it because it ain't changing. Oh, think about this. Just add uncompromising to some words in God. I have uncompromising faith in God. What? I have uncompromising love of my father. Mm. He gives me uncompromising grace and mercy because I'm his child. But watch what happens when the world wants to come in and they want to negotiate and they want you to do what? Compromise. Take a little less than 100%. Mm. Take a little less than what God has for you. Are you willing, watch this, because the compromise means you're willing to settle. Why would God have you settle for anything? He gave 100% of his son to bless us because he loves us. His love for us is uncompromising. You know why? Because he sacrificed his only begotten son to save us. And so as a result, we as his children should be uncompromisingly righteous because our father is righteous. But sometimes we compromise our righteousness because we believe that we need to be liked by the world for some reason. Hmm, I love God for this. See, ah, thank you, Father, for that. Sometimes we want to be liked by the world rather than loved by God. 
And so we compromise. We say to ourselves, it's okay to do X, Y, and Z. It's okay. And then we'll, then we'll put this off on God. And if y'all was here for the morning meal, we would understand that this, this kind of aspect of how we teach about Jesus, where Jesus is love and all of that's true. But Jesus is going to do some stuff when the time comes. There's some kings that's going to fall. There's some individuals that's going to be taken asunder. There's some nations that's going to be dealt with when our king crashes the sky and comes back to set things right. See, we got to understand that we are his children. And when we as his children become uncompromisingly righteous, what happens on the inside is some things start to shift and start to change. And just don't fight the shift and don't fight the change. That's all God is saying. He said, listen, it's a natural, gradual process. I'll show you the areas of your life where you have compromised. And that's okay. I'm going to deal with you because I'm going to put you on a strong foundation. And the more you get me in you, the less you will compromise. That's why the enemy wants you to stay away from the household of faith, not read the word, not pray, get off by yourself. Because when he gets you one-on-one, you will compromise. But when you are with God's people and you are in the world and you are in the word and you are looking at how God will bless you, you will not compromise. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve were together, they did not compromise the commandment that God gave. But when he got Eve off by herself, for just a moment of time, when there was just a little bit of separation, and we don't know exactly where Adam was at, but just a little bit of separation, the enemy comes in, he said, I need to just holler at you for just a minute. And she had conversation, and she entertained some things, and then she ate the fruit. She gave it to Adam, he ate the fruit, and they got kicked out. Why? They compromised the commandment. But watch this, but God didn't compromise the judgment. There's some stuff in your life that you just can't compromise in 2018. There's some things that you got to say to yourself. I've allowed these things to separate me from my father. I've allowed these things to separate me from my discipleship walk with the Lord. I've allowed these things to separate me from the house of the faith. I've allowed these things to separate me from prayer and fasting and all. I've allowed some stuff, but I can't allow that no more. I got to do something different in 18 and I ain't done in 17. And actually I could start practicing for 18 right now. I says, he said, uncompromisingly righteous, there's a fruit that's produced, and it comes from a tree of life, and it's good deeds that we are supposed to do. There's some things that we're supposed to do for each other. There's some good deeds, and I love God for this. Right, let, me, let me share something with you quickly. You work a job to get a check. A good deed don't require repayment. I'm going to say that again. You work a job to get a check. A good deed does not require repayment or payment. It doesn't seek it. It's just good in and of itself. It's a good, watch this, act. Because a deed is an act. It's not something that you talk about. It's something that you do. Have you ever had a person, watch this, have you ever had a person say, I'm going to be there for you when you need me? That was a good speech. But when I needed you, and I needed your words to, act, to match your actions, your actions and your words didn't line up. You always tell me you're going to be there for me when I need you, but when I need you, you ain't never there. So as a result, your actions speak louder than your words. See, a good deed is you do it just because God is good. You do it because he's blessed you. When you brought fruit over so that way the kids could put the bag together or you helped put the bag together, that was a good deed. If you didn't make it over to the nursing home, that was fine because you had blessed. You might have given money to be able to donate, to be able to get the fruit so the fruit could get to the people. That was a good deed. You ain't got to always be present. I love God for this. You ain't got to always be present to be present. Y'all missed that. See, some folk... You just, and I, watch this, don't mess around and always be absent. 
I ain't giving you no permission slip to just be absent all the time. You need to show up sometimes and do some stuff for yourself, right? But there's a place, God says, there's some good deeds that I want my people to do because watch this. And it says, and he who is wise captures humans' lives. They, it's a discipleship thing. When you do good deeds for people, it changes them, right? So now, check this out. Let's get here. Let's go to the next one real quick. I just got to run to a space. So charity, say charity. Love God for this. So myrrh is actually a representation of charity. Watch this. It's the third gift to Jesus. It's a sweet-smelling product of what? Good deeds. It's the fruit of the tree of life. Those that have life in Jesus can do good deeds. Amen. Watch what happens here. It's a sweet-smelling sweet good deeds, generosity, giving, and helpfulness, especially to the needy and suffering produced from the branches of Jesus' vine. Now watch this. And it's the smell of kingdom-building Christian disciples who bless and help others, which pleases God. See, watch this real quick. I just got to share something with you. When your household of faith says we're about to do a good deed, get on board. However you need to get on board. Support, donate, come out, whatever you need to do. But get on board. You know why? Because there's something about good deeds that will change your life. And there's a fruit that comes out of that, that blesses God's people. I'm going to share something with you just as God is blessing. I was looking at Big Dog in the back. There was something that happened. We wound up going out, right? We, we were going to have our church anniversary, which is great, and having a great time. And I said, God, we got to get out in the community and start doing some stuff. It ain't a boatload of us, but if we could just, God, start having some kind of impact for your community, for your people, God, just, just show a way. Just open a door, God. And the people from Habitat called me like about a couple days after I prayed that. I said, God, you are off the hook. Didn't get held up all the rest of that, right? Got right to me. They called. They said, listen, we want to do it on September the 9th. I said, that is great. That was when our church anniversary and our picnic was supposed to happen. But we're going to do something else. Let us go do some good deeds. Let me show you how good deeds multiply. So we do some good deeds. We pray for the people. Two of our neighbors got houses, awesome families, all the rest of it. Then what happened later was they needed a Bible. Rock did the Bible presentation. Then they needed their house blessed. Read through the blessing that big dog did for the house. It was huge. Do you understand how a good deed that was done, the people who received the good deed, who we partnered with in the good deed, when the new good deed needed to happen, they said, we want you on board. Y'all missed that. Do you see how good deeds multiply themselves? Why? Because they're good and God want to bless his kingdom. So he want good people to do good things. Who I love God for this. We're going to mess around and get to a space. So since frankincense is love and since myrrh is charity when I combine frankincense and myrrh which is on your hands when I combine love and charity ooh, it got a smell that's different than anything else you could ever smell See, when God's people, and watch this and when you get to a point where you don't have to have a bottle of this when you get to a point where your life is just this, where your faith is mixed with some love and some charity, you'll mess around and change the atmosphere that you live in. You'll mess around and walk into a space and they're like, why are you working like you're working? Because God gave me breath in this body and I better use it while I got it because I can't do it when I can't use it. And there's going to come a point I ain't going to be able to lift boxes. Let me lift them while I can still do it. And because he loves me and I love you, and because my faith is rooted in him, I got to do some good deeds. Because watch this. Faith without some good deeds, without some works, is what? Dead. So that's a gift I can't give unless it Unless it manifests itself the right way. If I got faith in God, then I should have some good deeds. Because I love him. And he loved me, right? Let's get here. I got to run to a space. So when we look at this next one, let's get here real quick. 
The three gifts I'm asking you to give to the king, the three gifts that we've talked about over the last three weeks, it's three simple gifts. Faith, love, and charity. It was just the three things. Open yourself up to God. Give your faith to him. Stop putting your faith in everything else. But put your faith in him. I oh, sis, I love God for this. You'll put your faith in the weatherman or the weather woman. They tell you it's going to rain. You'll tell your babies, get your umbrella. You'll make sure your umbrella is in the car. You'll put them in the little galoshes or whatever it is that they got to wear, right? Why? Because you didn't put your faith in what they told you. And then when it don't rain, you're like, well, they ain't got to be right all the time. Let me tell you where you could put your faith in God. He's right all the time. He don't mess up. There ain't no faults in him. There ain't no mistakes when you put your faith in him. But you got to put your faith there. You got to invest your faith in God. Next part, love. Oh, love is, it ain't always easy to love folk when they don't hurt you. It ain't always easy to love people who act like they unlovable. But sometimes the reason that they act like that is because they jacked up. And all you got to do is look in the mirror. Don't look at them. Look in the mirror and say, God, how could I love them better? But God, they keep hurting me. Okay, but how could I love them? I need to put some healthy boundaries up. But how could I love them in the way that you would love them? Maybe it's just pray for them. Maybe it's call the pastor. Pastor, could you add this name to the prayer blessing list? Put them on the list and just have God pray for you. You're praying for them. Because he says, what? You're supposed to pray for your enemies. You ain't supposed to do, oh, I love God. Let me just keep you in the space. You're not supposed to try to go into general mode and strategize how you could take them out. This ain't that. This ain't combat for you. You need to be able to say, listen, I'm going to pray for them and I'm going to leave it to you, God. Do you know that at that point when you leave it to God, you get peace? And the reason you don't have peace and you under stress is because you're so busy trying to figure out how you're going to do it. And so you never get peace that passes all understanding because you didn't try to figure out how you're going to take them out. And God said, that ain't what I want you to do. I just need you to pray. All I need you to do is say, God, bless them according to your will. God, change them according to your will. God, do whatever you're going to do in the situation. And then I'm going to let it go. Because watch this. It says in his word, and David confirmed this, that God told Jesus that he will make Jesus' enemies his footstool. So if they're going to be a footstool for my Lord and Savior, I ain't trying to put my foot on them. I'm going to let Jesus put his foot on them. What? When Jesus got his foot on you, you got something that got to change in your life, and I don't need to be trying to look at whatever it is that's happening. I need to just be focused on serving him myself. Right? So watch what happens. Then charity. When I can start giving stuff willingly to people, you know that there's a situation that I found myself in. I said, God, I don't even want to be in this. This ain't even cool. I didn't do nothing wrong. He said, this ain't got nothing to do with you. It got to do with my son. You're just going through. And then he shifted me just last night. He shifted me. He said, do you know that there's conversations that you wouldn't have had unless this trial was coming the way that it's coming? Do you know that there's people that you wouldn't have talked to about my son Jesus had this thing not drug on? Do you understand that you even got to pray for the person that's coming against you because they need me and you already got me and you got enough of me that you can share with this person who don't even want me? What? Thank you for the trial, God. What other one you want to put me in? What other one you want me to run to? Just give me understanding in your time. And there was a point where I was like, I just want this over. And God said, it ain't over until I say it's over. But then I thought about it. Why can't I hang out with a winner? Why can't I hang out if I know it's victory? So what if it don't look like victory to me in the midst of it? It's still victory. You know why? Because my faith is rooted in him. Hmm. So let's get here. I got to get, 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 get y'all to a, a different version of the Bible real quick. This is the only one that I use. Some of y'all get it. Some of y'all don't. It's just a version that the Lord gave me. You can't buy it in the stores. I only use it for this one biblical experience that we're in right now. But he brought me to a space. <laughs> And he said, I just want you to read it to them the way that I've given it to you because it's real talk. This is what he has me experience in this message. 
He said, if you were really to read verse 10 out of Matthew 2, according to the way that I'm having you experience it right now, it would be when they saw the star guiding them, they were filled with great joy. See, when you see Jesus guiding your life, even in the midst of trial, you should be filled with great joy. Not regular joy, but great joy. I'm going to share something with y'all because I like to give confession to God's people. I messed around this morning and forgot that my daughter Joy was staying over at my mother's house last night. Sometimes when you got kids and they've been with you so long, you just forget when they're not there at the house because you're so accustomed to them being at the house. And so I woke up this morning and my daughter Jade has a game. And I said, listen, we got to get Jade ready for the game. And I went in Joy's room and Joy isn't here. Where is Joy at? And my wife said, Joy stayed at your mama's house. I said, no, I done got older and messed around and got jacked up in the process. So I'm in the car by myself. I'm just confessing, y'all, because I think it's a part of this message is God is good. So I'm coming into church by myself, and then I mess around, and I see Joy in the back. Now, my wife had just told me that Joy had stayed over at my mama's house. I'm standing up here teaching, and I hear Joy reading in the back, and I said, how did Joy get to the church when she didn't ride with me? Just was in a space. I'm way older than I think I am. And so watch this. I'm sharing this with y'all for a reason. Joy messed around and showed up when I wasn't expecting it. See, I forgot that Joy wasn't with me. But Joy came when I needed Joy. See, you get that? See, sometimes in your life you forget that joy is always with you because you get so used to joy always being there. But when joy ain't there and then you see joy in a new way, come into your life, you get filled with what? Great joy. And watch this. And somebody else had to bring joy to me because I usually keep joy with me, but joy had traveled somewhere else. So joy had to come with my mama to the house. And so when she came with my mama to the house, I was filled when I saw her with what? Great joy. Give God a hand clap just for that. Some of y'all was like, Pastor, how you going to bring it around? Just stay with me because I'm almost done. So in this art version, just this part right here in 11, it says, when they entered the house, and house is capitalized. You know why? Because it's in the house of faith, but also into your temple. Because sometimes you got to get in your own temple to figure out something for yourself. Watch what happens. It says, and remembered all that Jesus had done for them. When you get to that space and you're in the house and you start to remember all that Jesus has done for you, watch what happens. They bowed down and worshiped him. They opened their hearts and gave him all of their faith. Love and charity. You see how that changes perspective? You see how that can shift the atmosphere? You see how you can open your heart to God and he do something different? Let me run to a different space. We almost done. I got to get here, Anya. So three gifts for the king that we've talked about over these last three Sundays. Faith, our indestructible faith, illuminates hope in darkness and is strengthened, increased in shape with blows from trials. Your faith can't get stronger unless the enemy tests it. Your faith ain't going to get stronger and be highly malleable unless you go through some stuff. And when you go through the stuff, you come out with greater faith. Without the trial, your faith don't get stronger. But with the trial, you become victorious by your faith. What? Now I can talk about tests and persecutions different. Cool, enemy. You don't know what I'm going to be on the other side. I'm straight for right now. You think you got me in the pit, but I'm coming out with God. Watch this what happens next. He says, love, our unconditional love is sweet smelling God. Watch this. Multiplies when we share it with others and helps in healing spiritual, emotional, and relational wounds. Do you understand that our unconditional love changes some stuff? And watch what happens next. 
Charity, our selfless charity of good deeds, generosity, giving, and helpfulness, especially the needy and suffering, pleases God. You want to do something pleasing to God? Help some folk. Do something to help somebody else. Sometimes, real talk, is just listening to somebody who needs two ears. Sometimes it's sharing the truth with somebody when everybody else has been lying to them. Sometimes it's why I said, sometimes it's real talk for real people at the right time. Sometimes it's discerning that what's going on ain't right. Sometimes it's standing up when everybody else is sitting down. Sometimes it's speaking up when everybody else is silent. Sometimes it's saying that daddy said this the way we're supposed to do it and we're doing it this way because daddy said and that is it. Sometimes it's being uncompromisingly righteous in an unrighteous situation. Sometimes it's just walking like Jesus did. And it's that simple. But watch what happens here when we get these three gifts to Jesus. Let's look at this next slide real quick. Three gifts for the king, faith, love, and charity. When we willingly give our indestructible faith, unconditional love, and selfless charity to King Jesus, watch what he does. He uses them to do what? To illuminate and brighten a dark world. He uses them to heal broken and hurting people. Hurting people. And watch this. He uses them to bless his kingdom with great joy. My faith, my love, my charity, when I give it to the king, when I give them to Jesus willingly, and I say, Jesus, these are the greatest gifts I have. I have no greater gifts to share. If you'll take these gifts, Jesus, and use them according to your will, you'll set me as a lamp in a dark world. You'll, God, use me to help and heal broken and hurting people. And God, you'll pour me out as a blessing to your kingdom so that not just me, but also them, can have great joy. Stand to your feet.